let me take a couple minutes just to give you my reflections on, on Dad and this story and how it affected us. Um, you know, I, first of all, Dad was probably never supposed to be at the University of Michigan. When he got out of high school, uh, it was a depression. They didn't have any money. There was no money to go to school. And he was not going to college. And his high school principal called him in and said, Jerry, what are you going to do now? You, you graduated from high school. And Dad said, well, we don't have any money. It's a depression. Can't afford to go to school. And, and his high school principal said, Jerry, I want you to go one year to the University of Michigan. And he had motives because he wanted Dad to play football there. There were no scholarships at that time. But he was going to figure out a way to get Dad to Michigan so he could play football for the University of Michigan. And Dad said, well, we don't have any money. He says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to loan you $100. We're going to do a fundraiser. You're going to be the first recipient of that $100, which will pay for your first year at Michigan. Now, I know it costs a little more than that now. <laughs> <laughs> but back in 1930, 31, you could go to Michigan. It was 100 bucks. So they did that. They raised money for Dad. That high school principal invested in his life. And Dad got here and then figured out a way to afford the next three years and went to school here. But he used to tell the story when they dedicated this school that he used to walk across the campus as a young <clears throat> freshman on a cold winter day, probably not as cold as today, but cold winter day. And he said, there used to be this big empty lot, pile of dirt on State Street. And he goes, I used to wonder what the heck they're going to do with that piece of ground that was back in 1931. And he said at the dedication, he talked about, here I stand, you know, 60, 70 years later, and you've built a school with my name on it because one man loaned me $100. That's invested in people's lives. And I think if I were to sum up Dad's life, the reason, the way he got to Michigan, the way he got to know your grandfather, uh, and how they interacted together, both of them great gentlemen, honorable gentlemen, was he had great people in his life early on that invested in his life. His parents, um, his high school football coach, his church pastors, Boy Scout leader, all those people invested in Dad's life and got him here to the University of Michigan, and Michigan invested in him, and, and uh, it turned out it was a tremendous story about character and integrity and a story about friendship with your, your grandfather. I didn't, you know, I didn't know the story about Willis Ward um, in the field uh, of play at football. The, the way I knew about your grandfather was at dinner, Dad would always talk about he was good friends with a guy that beat Jesse Owens. <laughs> and I knew who Jesse Owens was, and so that was a big deal. But I'd never really heard the story about the game with Georgia Tech. So that was a big moment for me. Dad was very humble about that story. He was more impressed that his good friend Willis Ward had beat Jesse Owens. And <laughs> that's how he talked about it. Um, again, if there was one story, uh, and when we did the Larry King show, that, that was kind of what I told Larry King was if there was one story and you said you can only tell one story about your father's life, what would it be? It would be the Willis Ward story. I, I think that is the pearl of who dad was. I think that one story resonates and ripples out into every other area, whether it be the Supreme Court case here at the University of Michigan, the law school. Um, I think it ripples out his compassion dealing with the pardon. Um, parts of that story, the Willis Ward story, I see in the fabric of so many other decisions. When, when uh, he gave the pardon for Richard Nixon, what most people forget is on that same time, same day, basically, he wanted to give amnesty to all the draft dodgers in Vietnam that had divided this country in the war. And his feeling for healing of a nation was not just about trying to find grace and forgiveness for Richard Nixon. It was about grace and forgiveness for many other people to bring a nation back together. But the pardon is what got the highlight. It wasn't the, the young men that had to flee and go to Canada to avoid the draft for the Vietnam War. Uh, that was a period when Dad felt very strongly the whole country was so divided that uh, 
these acts of grace and mercy needed to happen to bring a nation back together again. They weren't very popular decisions at the time, but uh, that was a fabric of, of who he was. Uh, let me just close by saying that um, I was always amazed when I heard that story that I think it was 1961 or 62 before there was a college in the ACC, Atlantic Coast Conference. I think it was the University of Maryland in 1962 that had a black player on its team. That was 30 years after the Willis Ward incident. So these two young men, your grandfather and my dad, and many other people on that team, as you guys know, dad was not the only one that was fighting to get Willis on the team uh, to play that day. It was 30 years later, University of Maryland, before you had a black player. Uh, these guys were forward-thinking people. And uh, Buzz, I didn't, we didn't know who you were until the vote came up, and we were shocked to find out, who's this guy, this Democratic senator from Detroit? And it turns out, you're, you know, to see our next generation get back together and kind of go full circle and keep this going. Uh, I think your grandfather and my father would be both, both be very proud. So that's your introduction. Why don't you come up here? So. <laughs> you know, it was interesting uh, when we were talking about how our families came together. And again, to me, the, the other part of this is to now know Buzz and to see our families together, the next generation and our parents and your granddad would be so happy with that. Again, I think it was in the nature of these two men that there might be differences politically or things like that, but they knew how to get along. And that's an example for all of us today. When you look what's happening in Washington, D.C. and politics and it's these lines in the sand. Uh, when dad was a, a congressman and then president, his best friend was Tip O'Neill, the Democratic Speaker of the House. And Tip O'Neill used to come by our house all the time. Dad and him would fight on the floor of Congress about ideas. They would find compromise. And then Tip O'Neill would be at our house for dinner or a drink or something like that. And, and there was a respect for each other to find those compromises. Um, I, I remember there's a great story about Dad and Tip O'Neill were on the golf course together playing golf. And this is when Dad was president. And Tip O'Neill looked over at my father and he said, he said, Jerry, he said, isn't this a great country? We can go out and play golf together, be great friends. And he says, 18 months from now, I'll be traveling around the country trying to kick your ass in the election. <laughs> <laughs> and they just had a wonderful friendship but a respect for each other. So, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting yeah. time. Well, and you know, Willis was a Republican. Don't, don't yeah. <laughs> make, 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 make no mistake. He, 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 was, he was a Republican. He, prob he probably would not like my party affiliation uh, <laughs> by, uh, uh, by any stretch. But, uh, you know, it, just a testament to the family relationship. I recently had a flood in my house, and so I had all of my memorabilia, everything that I've uh, that I've stored uh, from my 14 years in, in office here in Michigan, uh, and I watched it uh, just kind of floating away. Uh, so you know, so ev ev everything's gone. Uh, but Steve uh, mentioned that you know he he made a point of writing some notes to me. Uh, along the way as, as we had these debates and discussions. Uh, just as um, President Ford, uh, and how I, I actually learned about this, President Ford wrote a note to my grandmother, hmm. um, just reacquainting her and introducing himself and saying how much uh, you know, it meant to have that relationship with Willis mm -hmm. uh, and that she, he had heard that she, was, that, he, that she was ill and so he just wanted to wish her well. Um, so the only thing that survived this flood are 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 the notes that uh, Steve mm. sent to me. So, you know, so so my 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 my, my remaining uh, legacy of, uh, of of my years in the legislature are uh, Steve Ford's uh, uh, notes uh, to me. So, uh, you know, the, the the Fords continue to be very special to us.